Perfectionism, a way of dealing with childhood trauma. Published by Paula Kavner on February 15, 2018. Is it bad that I'm a perfectionist? I can say that I would have been very happy to describe myself as a perfectionist as I saw it as a person who was good and wanted to do their best. I was often teased for the way I did certain things in the house, but I ignored this believing that I was doing things right and they were just too lazy to bother. I never saw it as a negative way of being in the world. Dr. Brené Brown says perfectionism is one of the three main ways people protect themselves from getting hurt. She says it's just a form of armour and connected to your sense of shame and fear of not being good enough. She explains that we use perfectionism in areas of our lives that we feel most vulnerable. It is driven by a belief that if I look perfect, work perfect, live perfect, I will avoid and minimise criticism, blame or ridicule. When I was in school, I would ask Joyce to write my homework in a copy because her writing was tidy and my copy stayed clean. My writing was sloppy and my copy was always dirty from using my eraser over and over again. Over time, I began to copy her writing, partly so I wouldn't get caught, but mainly because I was so embarrassed at my own handwriting. When I began working in the family business making soft ties, I was so obsessed with keeping my workspace clear. I became very stressed if my bench was untidy. I had nothing on the surface that was not immediately needed and the tools I did need, as in the scissors or chalk, had to be placed just right or I found myself getting tense, getting headaches or physical pain in my body. At the time, I didn't make any connection to my physical symptoms. When I played basketball, I would come home and wash everything I had on. I was convinced that my clothes needed to be scalded clean to remove any trace of personal odour. I ironed everything I wore, pants, socks, bras. I even washed my runners and removed the laces and ironed them when they were dry. I also spent a lot of time making sure that the laces went back into my runners without creasing them. I knew this was mad but I felt I was so ugly on the inside, so my outward appearance had to be perfect enough to distract from anyone noticing me. I developed a number of conditions in my teens, which I was unaware of. I just thought it was my way of doing things. I was obsessed with cleanliness and doing things in a particular order. Because of this, everything took longer, as I had to repeat the task three times to ensure that I removed all the dirt. When I cleaned my bedroom, I had to do it in a particular order, removing the bedding and hoovering the bed and the floor at least three times in case I missed anything. I would then remove my clothes and put them in the wash before showering and scrubbing every inch of my body with a nail brush to make sure I got rid of all the germs I imagined were on my skin. I hated my life and the only thing that helped me was my love of basketball. I created a completely different me with the basketball group. Although I was obsessed in the sport, training every day, sometimes getting up at 6am to run drills and even sleeping with my basketball beside me. This to me seemed perfectly normal because I convinced myself it was necessary in becoming a good basketball player. In college and in my work and life, striving for perfection in everything I did put me under tremendous pressure as what I was looking for was impossible. I hated that I was an all or nothing kind of person. So if I made a mistake and wanted to avoid criticism, I just quit the task I was on at the time, making some excuse why it couldn't be completed. I was so anxious all the time and convinced that I was incapable of doing anything right. I was constantly waiting for someone else to realise I was stupid and sack me. I pushed myself to work harder than my colleagues. No matter how busy or overloaded I already felt, I never said no to anyone asking me to do something. I even volunteered myself for extra work, knowing it was impossible to meet my deadlines. I didn't want anyone to know I couldn't cope, so I used to take work home and stay up most nights to get it completed. I put myself under so much pressure to do things perfectly and I didn't tolerate mistakes. I became increasingly ill, I developed rashes, headaches, sinus problems and allergies. I struggled more and more to sleep, often returning to work after two hours sleep if I was lucky. I'd stare at the wall wishing I wasn't so much of a coward and willed myself just to end it all. The more I find out, about how and why I developed the need to be perfect, the more I recognise how unachievable and unnecessary it is. Through research and for why go back seven steps to healing from childhood sexual abuse, I had to explore the various conditions and disorders that I developed as a result of my childhood trauma. This information has armed me with the knowledge I needed to make the necessary changes. 
I could see the energy I was devoting to overthinking and overdoing any task I took on. This will sound like a contradiction, but how I minimise my need for perfectionism is I don't try. I accept that this is something I do and I don't use it as another way to tell myself that I have failed or use it as something else I hate myself for. Now when I start a new project, I start at the end. I ask myself what am I trying to achieve and who am I trying to please. My desire for perfectionism is driven by my need to be right and my belief that others can't do the work as well as me. This often stops me asking for help when I feel overwhelmed. This behaviour only feeds my perfectionism, but the more I recognise it in my behaviour, the more I challenge it. Believe it or not, my dogs really help me because they don't care if the house or the car is spotless or that I even want it to be perfect. They do their own thing regardless and they accept me just as I am. Dr. Brené Brown stated that the difference between perfectionism and a striver is the idea that you are doing something for the approval of others. I do perfectionism less and less and strive more. This has resulted in me improving my belief that what I do, I do to the best of my ability and that it is always good enough. You've been listening to the Kavanagh Sisters blog posts. We hope that these blogs provide helpful information based on our personal views and experiences and encourage conversations about these topics that we cover. You can contact us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook or directly at the Kavanagh Sisters at gmail.com.